Welcome to the Wild Wellness Podcast, where wild means women into living their dreams. I'm Jenny Holbert, and in each episode, we'll explore natural health and wellness, outdoor adventures, training, self-discovery, and personal growth. I want to inspire you to be the strong and healthy woman you really are, both on and off the trail. Because when wild women wake, mountains will move. Are you ready for an adventure? Hello and welcome to episode number eight on the Wild Wellness Podcast. This is your host, Jenny Holbert, and today I have a very special guest. Rachel Taylor is a health and life coach at Healthy Introvert, and she teaches women how to balance business, relationships, and family with the right diet, exercise, and self-care so they can love the skin they're in, boost their confidence, increase their success, and live life to its happiest. For everything mentioned in today's episode, you can check out the show notes at jennyholbert.com forward slash eight. And let's now bring on the lovely Rachel Taylor. Rachel, welcome to the Wild Wellness Podcast. I'm so excited to have you and dive into this chat. It's great to be here, Jenny. Thank you. Good, good. Yeah. So I thought it would be awesome to start out just by having you share how you got started in health coaching and why you're so passionate about helping others with self-care specifically. Absolutely. Um, So I really got started in health coaching when I realized that I have been essentially coaching all of my friends and family my whole life. Um, And it's what I really love to do. I love helping people figure out their problems and in a way that they didn't have to repeat the same problem. Um, And I got a little bit of that when I was a Pilates instructor, but I noticed that um, I couldn't seem to get my clients um, to follow through with everything I told them to when they weren't working with me. And I was always super frustrated about that. And I realized, I was like, oh, there's this whole industry focused on helping people work through like their sabotage and why they don't want to exercise and why they think vegetables are awful and all of that stuff. And I thought, oh, that's like the level before what I'm doing now. And so I went to school and I got a certified health and life coach and I loved every second of it. And I was really sad when I ran out of material. I was like, oh, school's over. Um, and, and I love that I can help people really break through stuff that, um, they thought was impossible, you know, when they actually can exercise regularly and enjoy it, you know, not hate it the whole time, like little things like that, that people thought were impossible. I'm able to coach them through and show them how they can just have more possibilities, um, when they're healthier and when they're, they're working towards and achieving all the goals that they're setting for themselves. Oh, yes, absolutely. That that makes so much sense to me. It's kind of funny because I feel mm-hmm. like that's why I went from my degree in exercise science to then getting a master's in sports psychology because I felt like I had had the, the physiology training and background of like how to write an exercise plan and, you know, work with that part of it, but then also adding in then the mindset part and how people navigate it and believe they can do it and motivation and all those things that come with it. So you're right. It is like the, the first step, because if we don't have that, then we're not going to have the perfect plan and not necessarily go with that anyway. Yes, absolutely. Yes. You can plan and plan and schedule and block out the time. But at the end of the day, if you don't want to do it, you're not going to do it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I know that's one of the things that, yeah, and that's one of the things you talk about um, quite a bit, I think, is when it comes to our health and lives. So often people feel as though they don't have enough time to do the things mm-hmm. that they want to do, like exercise, for example. Mm-hmm. So share your thoughts about that whole time issue that all of us have and what your stance is on it or how you help people navigate that. So what I found with the time issue was um, there's a small shift that I started with for my own personal um, time issue because I was the queen of, I don't have time for that. There's Mm -hmm. not enough time in the day. Um, And what I started to do was to shift that word. And instead of saying, I don't have time or I feel like I have to, or I need to, I found that it put this like internal pressure 
And it made me anxious when I felt like I had to do something or when I needed to do something. And when I put want, the word want instead of have to or need, and it was I want to, it actually was like, oh, like I felt like this release off of my heart. Like there was like a tight like grip on my heart. And when I changed the word to I want to, it releases. And I feel more in control about my choices. And so like on the days, you know, for example, over the weekend, we were in Catalina and it was super fun, but it was like three days of nonstop like activity, which was great. But then when you jump right back into work, you didn't really give yourself that chance to decompress off of the weekend because I'm a little more introverted and I need to relax just kind of by myself or just hanging out with one or two people. Right. I was around 15 for three days. And this morning I slept in <laughs> and instead of, you know, exercising before my work, I'm going to do it afterwards. And instead of saying, Oh, I need to get up and exercise or I shouldn't be sleeping in. I told myself, you know, I want to sleep right now and that's okay. And then I actually got some sleep and woke up feeling amazing. And now I have all this energy because that's what I needed. And so the time thing is, is really figuring out what you want to do over what you feel like you have to do and making more choices in align with what you want to do and, and not feeling like there's not enough time in the day because there is, you could be trying to pack more into a day than maybe the day will allow. And that's why you always feel like you don't have time. And there is always something that doesn't have to get done right then and there. There is always a way to shift it move it or delegate it to somebody else, right? Ask somebody, friend, family, can you do the laundry for me? Because I'm going to be home late because I want to get this done. Or can you start dinner? Like, it's okay to not do it all yourself. You're Wonder Woman, but like, you don't have to be Wonder Woman, like all the time. Other people can help you. You just have to let them. And I think that's a big part of it. We feel like we have to do all the things all the time. And that's a big part of why we never feel like we get a break. I completely agree. That's a huge point. So glad you said that because I think mm -hmm. a lot of times we do feel like we're on the other end of the time thing where it's almost like we're the victim or we're the one that's reacting to it instead of being in control of how we choose to spend it. And how we, and I know it's cliche to say like we all have 24 hours in a day and we choose how we spend it, but it's true. I mean, we can set the intention wherever we choose to and that was a perfect mm -hmm. example of like what you just shared about how you wanted to spend mm -hmm. your morning today as a result of things that had happened instead of letting yourself go down that should trail you know which I think we can yeah. go down a lot and very easily I know I get there sometimes too and learning how you know learn how to catch myself sooner now when I start to mm -hmm. think like why well, should be doing this it's like we'll come back to you know how this really aligns with what your main intention is yeah I like to call it don't should on yourself. Yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. Oh my gosh. Uh, or don't should on other people. Or, and I, I'll even say that when someone says, oh, well, you should be doing this when, I, when it comes to anything. And I go, don't uh, should on me. And it kind of right. makes them take a step back. And then they kind of laugh. And it's a really cute way to be like, no, uh -huh. <laughs> I'm fine. Um. That's so good. Yeah, because we put that on ourselves and we do get it from others too. And I like how you shared too that yeah. it's, it's about asking for help and, um, you know, for support in that area, whether that's, like you said, helping, you know, maybe have a spouse take the kids so that you can go work out or, you know, get some uh -huh. support in things around the home, whether it's cooking or cleaning stuff or just to make some space so that you can do those things. And I think especially, do you, I mean, I shouldn't pres presume that it could be a male or female thing, but do you <laughs> find in working with women yeah. in particular that that's harder? You do? It's very hard. Um, and I think a big part of it is because when you, when any, anybody, but I'm going to, because you asked about women, I'm going to say my experience with women is when a woman doesn't feel like she has time. She feels like her world is spinning out of control. So she's going to then take action on things that she knows she can control. So she knows she can control laundry. She can control dinner. She can control certain things around the house. She can control picking up the kids. She can control um, doing all of the things in the house or in her business that she can. And so she's going to spend more and more time trying to control the things that she believes she can in order to feel less 
um, spinny. And so the problem with that is when you get in that mode of trying to control, it's really, really hard to let somebody else do something for you, anything for you. Um, and I work with a lot of, I'm saying cooking and laundry and picking up kids because I work with a lot of women that have um, that dual responsibility that they're, they're working part-time or full-time and then they they also have kids and they're they are putting on both hats. And so I find it's really hard for them to um, delegate home responsibility because that's one area that they have the most, um, the most like control and they have the most, um, I guess you could say like they know how it should get done and they can get it done in the way that they want and in the time frame that they want. And then they feel like there's like that sense of accomplishment because it's like, oh, well, I got, you know, X, Y, and Z done. And so I feel better um, because I couldn't control the other things, but I can at least do it here. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. And it kind of reminds me a little bit about sometimes our relationship with food too, which I don't know if we should jump mm-hmm. to that right away. Cause that, it just makes me think <laughs> of the whole, um, having con- getting, feeling out of control and feeling like you don't have a grip on whether it be your schedule or, how you're yeah. um, spending that time then, you know, feeling sort of a, like everything's all over the place. Um, and then yeah. going to the food area and something that we all do on a regular basis, which is fuel ourselves. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I know mm-hmm. you have um, a lot of conversation around with your clients is around dieting and around emotion around dieting and even weight loss. And you know, I know I grew up with certain beliefs around weight loss and I've had to relearn so much when it comes to diets and weight and mm-hmm. body image and so much there. But will you share a few things you've noticed that a lot of women struggle with when it comes to diet and how you helped shift that perspective with them, even if it um, relates to the aspect of control in that too? Yeah, absolutely. What I have noticed and what I've worked on with my clients is um, – when they're again feeling like things are spinning out of their um, their control, or they feel like something didn't quite turn out the way they wanted, or the way that they feel it should, subconsciously they always turn to food because they can control what they do there. And so mm-hmm. it's a way for you to regain that sense of power, and it's all subconscious. It's not someone sitting there going like, "Well, I'm upset at my boss, so I'm going to like eat just pasta for lunch." Like that's not. It's not happening on that surface. It's all subconscious. And when you add in um, your, um, you know, we all have different experiences growing up with food, with our parents, with our friends. And so a lot of times there's experiences there that exacerbate you wanting to turn to food for control. Um, and and it's, it's a way that, that you can feel like you've regained some of your own power. And what I have noticed with a lot of the women that I've coached is it's, it's a way to shift that, yes, you're in control of it, and that's a good thing, but there's actually more power in making a choice that's going to be better for your body. Like, you can think you're controlling your food and yet still be a victim to it. And so what I work on with women is getting them to shift that you're in control of your choice right now. So based on what you want, whether that's weight loss, to not eat, to, you know, eat less sugar, to have more vegetables, to, to eat more fish and less red meat. What choice you're making right now, you're in control of, and it's going to directly affect what you want. And so there is a way to be in control but still be a victim, and then there's a way to be in control and be empowered. And there's two, there's, there's two choices when it comes to food. Um, and then I really work on getting women to switch to that next one because um, growing up, I – grew up with um, my uh, father's sister grew up with an eating disorder. And so I grew up with, we were never really allowed to talk about like food or diet, like going on a diet was um, a taboo thing. Like you never wanted to say, Oh, I, you know, I, I feel fat or, Oh, I want to go on a diet or I don't want to eat this. If I ever said I didn't want to eat something, it was like a big dramatic, like, Oh, what's wrong? Like, you know, And, and there was that tension there and it took me until I was about 19 to be like, no, I'm going to talk about what I'm eating. Like, it's okay. Um, and it's taken me a lot of personal coaching to get through like, okay, well, I don't want to be on a diet per se, but I want to eat in a way that I feel good and I feel like I have energy and my pants fit. 
but you know, I still want to be able to have like chocolate and wine and like, you know, French fries. And so it's finding that balance about what your body feels, recognizing um, what foods really kind of fill you up and make you feel kind of like, well, and trying to either avoid those or eat those on tiny doses. And then finding the foods that make you feel really, really, really good and, and figuring out like how to eat those more because your body's going to feel so amazing when you eat the way that your body wants that you're going to not have those cravings for all of those like crappy foods because it's like, well, I feel amazing. I don't need that. And if I do eat it, it's now like fun and it's not something that I'm eating all the time. And it's not this like guilty, shameful, like, oh, I ate ice cream. Like you can have ice cream. The world's not going to end. But like you can't have it for like dinner every single night. Like that's not going to help you feel amazing. And the whole point is to get you to feel amazing and eat in a way that you don't feel restricted. Um, Because diets don't work, but eating in the way that your body needs does. So there's like, there's that disconnect there that society has created around like, well, just go on a diet. Like it's not a it's not a calories in, calories out thing. It's, it's eating in a way that your body feels amazing. And, and working with a coach is how you, you really figure that out. Yes. Oh, 100%. You and I are on the same page, girl. <laughs> that is uh-huh. <laughs> exactly, um, exactly how I have come to understand it better and you know, work through my own challenges with it. And also same experience in working with people on emotions around food and um, weight loss and body image Mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. It's, it's so interesting how we carry our experiences and how that shapes how we come to relate to food and to our bodies later on, Mm -hmm. but then also being able Mm -hmm. to just see that and have the awareness of like, Oh, that's where it came from. For me, that has been Mm -hmm. hugely eye opening, just, you know, very part, much part of the, the healing process and freeing just to notice that's where it came from. And now I have the choice to change that. And that's, that's a big part of it too, I think. Yeah, that origin story, figuring out where it's coming from, and then forgiving it and forgiving yourself and forgiving the person or persons or the story or the feelings around it. That's it's so huge, because you're going to stay stuck until you release that it's just going to come up and manifest itself in new ways and in, in new like, um, sticky situations to like torture yourself in unless you release that and that just takes coaching that just takes time to figure out what is going on there you know and you have to be willing to dive in a little bit and uncover that story so that you can you know move forward and stop dealing with that thing that you've been like struggling with for like years and years and years like there's no reason you can you have to struggle with that but it's going to take a little bit of work, you know, to release it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I feel like there's going to be many women who listen to this who can relate to at least some of it, if not all of it, <laughs> for sure. Because yeah. I think we're Thanks. all in that and noticing even that I think almost makes it um, more possible to work through too, when you mm-hmm. know that you're not alone. Um, I know that a lot of times yeah. you work with groups when you do coaching as well. Do you, yeah. what kind of, what kind of benefits do you see in that? Um, benefits of the groups is, is really twofold because you get the, um, you get the community, which is so key. Anytime you're making any kind of a change, you need that accountability. Um, and I find a lot of times people will recruit like their family member or their, you know, their their girlfriend or their boyfriend. It's like, we're going to do it together. And unfortunately what happens is subconsciously what somebody in that party will sabotage not only themselves, but the other person. And that's Mm -hmm. why it never works. Um, and that's why you usually see one person at the gym, like, it's like, it's like their friends and there's like the super, super like fit, like over the top friend. And then it's like the other friend that's like going to the gym with them, but like only kind of comes ish. That's, that's why there's like that weird disconnect. Um, and so, cause they're like trying to get them to join, but it's like, well, they don't really want to do it. <laughs> um, and so what I find is the groups is like the actual community because we're all actively trying to do the same thing. We are all navigating life's choppy waters, trying to figure out how am I going to take care of myself and get everything that I want to done and like not only get it done, but actually enjoy myself while I'm doing it because I don't believe in working so hard that you are stressed and miserable and overwhelmed and burned out and exhausted. um, Because that is not a life. And, And there is a way to find that balance. And it's just little baby, tiny daily habits to just get you closer and closer to that balance and being aware of that. And so when you have that community, you can check in with other people. 
They're going to ask questions that maybe you had that you were too scared to ask. Um, or they're going to have an issue that you didn't even know is like an issue. And you're like, as they're talking and saying the question, you're like, oh my gosh, I have the same problem. I had no idea. But because somebody else is saying it, it like clicks in your brain and you have a breakthrough and like you're just sitting there quietly observing, having like your mind blown because someone asked a question that you didn't even right. know you needed to ask. And so that's really the benefit of the group. Um, and I keep it a safe space on purpose. It's, it's closed and, and because it's sensitive things we're talking about. You know, it's a chance to get real without judgment, which I find is, is really hard to find in an online community. Um, there's always that fear of like, what are people going to say? And that's just when you create that group space, it's like you guys band together. You're taking on this problem head on. You've got your like arm in arm, Red Rover across like, you know, the playground. And, and it doesn't stand a chance when you go as that united front. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, I think that that group collaboration and kind of cohesiveness, it, it's not even something that everyone expects everything that they'll get out of it. And once you start mm -hmm. navigating it together, it, you know, it's sort of like um, the adventure unfolds as you go and you realize what an amazing kind of teamwork effort it becomes sometimes anyway it's, it's a definitely a soul effort too and taking yeah. those steps um because no one can do it for you but yeah there's something different to knowing that you're not out there alone exactly and that's why i have um i have a, a it's a four-week course and it's it's a group course that's focused just on addressing self-care um and that's why i built that because i i coach privately with other programs but i was like we need something just for self-care mm -hmm. and um four weeks is like a very manageable time um, because it takes 21 days to build a habit. And so you've got that extra bonus week to make sure that the sabotage doesn't get you. And it, um, it's very, it's getting a lot of interest in it. And I'm really, really excited to run it for the first time. So I'm super, super stoked because yeah. there is a need for it. We That's all need so more great. help there. Yeah. You had the new program that you just started. It incorporates exercise, food and self care, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And the, the self-care piece, would you dive into that just a little more? Because I think that definition or when people hear that self-care, it can come in a lot of different ways. A lot of us, you know, have different perceptions of what that means. So tell us a bit mm -hmm. about what you cover and that, what it means to you and even like who it's perfect for. So for the self-care portion, it's really, everybody is so different and it's figuring out what you need in your life and in your daily routine to basically make sure that you are doing what's necessary to take care of your health and manage your stress naturally. And I like to call it putting yourself on your own to-do list, you know, and, and it's, it's learning the tools to stop sabotaging yourself and to stop feeling guilty for taking time care of yourself and, and to build healthy boundaries around your self care. And so it's really perfect for people that um, they want to really release what we already talked about, that story that's stopping them from taking care of themselves and set that good example of a healthy lifestyle for their family and, and how to, when life gets crazy, still make sure that you're doing even five, 10 minute things a day that is managing your stress and keeping you from feeling burned out and exhausted and, you know, backtracking after you've done all this work. Cause a big, big problem with sabotage is a lot of times it can snowball out of control and you'll have done all this amazing hard work and, and then you'll get sabotaged because something gets thrown at you. Cause life can be crazy. And unfortunately a lot of times it snowballs and then you're like, Oh my gosh, I not only undid everything that I like did, but I've made like I've I've like made the problem worse. I've like exacerbated the issue, and and that's because they didn't have that tool to stop sabotage. And that's where like the the key is. And so this basically throughout the four weeks, we're focusing on your body and uncovering basically like the limiting beliefs around what your body could look like. Really connect you to why you want to change and, and really get that deep in your heart creating this like personal power and this nourishment. So basically what you need to do specifically and how you need to add self-care into your life to make, you know, you actually enjoy your days and make yourself healthier. That could be diet. That could be exercise. That could be taking breaks to stretch. It's going to be different for everybody. And that's what I love about this program is it, it's good for anyone that wants to find that balance. And then of course you go into how to identify your sabotage, get back on track when life happens 
and then build the healthy boundaries around it so that as you move forward in life and you graduate from the course, you are still going to know not only what you need to do for your personal health, but then also protect that space that you built in the long term and how to adapt it for whatever gets thrown at you. That's so good. It, it makes so much okay. sense that, to have that in there as a core piece. It is the key, like you said, because I think we can at least all relate to either having those daily practices and rituals that we do that keep us kind of running on our fullest, uh, or we can relate to okay. almost knowing that we need something different and that that's the piece that's missing. And maybe, you know, obviously mm -hmm. not everyone can yeah. see that for themselves. And that's where a program like that comes in and getting some coaching can support someone and seeing that like, Oh, this is what I'm missing. This is the piece that would actually help me to achieve that exercise goal or actually to work on, um, you know, eating the way that aligns with how I truly feel that I want to be feeding myself and fueling myself. That's, there's this, this gap and it almost fills the gap it seems with some of those things. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And really flesh out what's going on subconsciously and, um, and then taking it into action, you know, yeah. because the action is obviously where you see the results. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, I think we all have those certain daily rituals and things I'm sure you do too. Is there anything that you would want to share that you're personally working on most or practicing most when it comes to your own self-care? Um, absolutely. So for me, my big thing is um, getting that creative, getting my creativity back um, when I take breaks. I, when I started this business, I got in the wonderfully bad habit of getting like, I'm on a creative spike because I'm like writing, I'm building, I'm doing whatever I'm doing, I'm creating this program. And then I would just work and work and work and work and, and like four, five hours would go by and all of a sudden I was like, I'm kind of thirsty and I look and it's like, oh my goodness, I have not like done anything for myself. And, and then I would try to justify it with, well, but I built this great thing and if I had stopped, I wouldn't have been able to like, I would have lost the creative spark or whatever. And which is just a wonderful sabotage in and of itself because then I would be exhausted and I wouldn't be able to like perform the next day or I would be too tired to like, you know, be with my friends or my family and I would want to just hide away and, and it just kind of created this like loneliness factor. And it was this really big sabotage I had and I worked with a coach and I was like, what, what is going on here? And we figured out that it was a way to keep me from um, moving forward, right? And growing and, and it, cause there's that, that fear when you start to take better care of yourself, there's that fear of, well, if I'm this new person, who am I going to be when I have this balance? Who am I going to be when I'm no longer stressed out by this? When I can work all day and, and um, not feel terrible because I didn't get up for, you know, four or five hours. I didn't eat and I didn't get a drink of water. Like, who am I to work well and have it go well and, and enjoy it? Who am I to enjoy my work, right? Mm. And I recognize that it was... Um, my dad works 10, 12 hours a day, sometimes 15 hours a day. And he does not enjoy work because he's working 10, 15 hours a day. I'm not sure anybody who <laughs> that. Um, and so there was, I had that story of, well, if you're working hard, then you must, you, you have to be miserable, right? And I had that subconscious story. And um, so when I started this business and didn't have any structure other than the structure I created for myself, I immediately fell into that pattern. And when I recognized it, I was like, oh, oh my goodness. And like my mind exploded, my world opened up, angels were singing. And so what I do is I have phone alarms because of course I have my phone with me and I have my calendar alarms. And my calendar alarms tell me to stand up, to eat, to get lunch, to um, read something for five minutes. Like, and, and I have a schedule. So before work, I, I do my exercise for 30 minutes and I, I read, um, I read some and I journal a little bit and I do my, my daily prayer, my daily gratitude, and then I start working. And then I, I have like a, a whole schedule fleshed out. But I, I have to have those phone alarms so that I don't get back into that sabotage. And, and that's my tool to, to combat, you know, to combat it basically, which is totally, totally works. And, and I love it. And then I just have to have that self-discipline to remember, oh, don't, um, 
the lie you're telling yourself that you have to keep working isn't that of itself a lie. You can stand up. In fact, you're actually going to be more creative if you stand up and take a break. And then I always get more done when I do that. And so it just proves itself again and again and again. The more I follow through, the better I feel. And so it's, it's becoming less of a like sabotage because I'm proving to myself slowly and over time that, oh, the decisions I'm making are actually making me feel better, you know? And so that's, so, that's really what uh, I work on. Yeah, uh, that's so interesting. Yeah. I, I couldn't yeah. agree more and relate more as a business owner as well. It's um, just hearing mm-hmm. you talk, it was almost like hearing a part of my own story <laughs> because I have those same, Aww. that same resistance, that same, yeah. um, you know, have gone through that whole process of figuring out why I need to give myself permission to take a break and why it's like, well, who am I to, who yeah. am I to, you know, and all of that. And it's funny what you said yeah. about creativity because I have found in the same thing that when I do give myself permission to take something for a walk around the woods, for example, that's one of my most creative mm-hmm. spaces. I literally mm-hmm. sometimes get so much more work done than I do when I'm sitting behind the computer screen trying to pound it out. Whereas that's where I think the work needs to happen, you know, yet yeah. going out and taking my phone, to, you know, with me to be able to voice text myself things or to record what I'm, you know, is coming to me at that point, that can be so productive and mm-hmm. that is so much more fun. It's so much more <laughs> adventurous oh, yeah. to me. And oh, yeah. I've, but I've had to give myself, you know, a big permission slip to do that and to keep coming back to it because I, I still have moments where I'm resistant to it. And it's like, I should be doing it this way, you know, and that's an active mm-hmm. practice for me too. I'm definitely getting better at it and better than I was yeah. in the beginning of having my own business. But it's so interesting what we do to ourselves in that. But then when we realize the other side of being able to take that permission and do that thing that's more freeing mm-hmm. and do it in a different way instead of the, the what we should be doing of how we can, like you said, it self-affirms. It continues to show us that, like, see, this works. And <laughs> it's working better than exactly. what you thought. It is so much more fun, and it shows through in um, in our work, you know. Oh, yes. And it's the same for everybody, even, you know, especially the people, even the people that they don't have their own business, it's going to show through in how they um, respond and, you know, interact with their friends and their family. It's going to, it's just going to show. People can tell when you're happy. It's just this energy that you give out, and they want to be around you then. And then because you're happy, you're like, yeah, I want to be around you too. Yes, that's the biggest thing, I think, with self-care, that – we have to remind ourselves, like you, you, you had said that you come back to the idea that if I am filling my own cup first, you know, if I'm doing this, mm-hmm. then I'm actually yeah. in the most optimal place to be able to pour out creativity and to pour out what I'm, what I'm giving and wanting to offer. And that's a misconception if we think that it works the other way around, because it can't, you can't pour from an empty cup. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. It's that, um, I love the oxygen mask metaphor which I'm sure you've heard if they put on your own oxygen mask first before you put on someone else's exactly Um, I know we all laugh at that when we see when we get on an airplane but whenever I see that now as a coach I'm just like so true I just like feel it right in my heart and everyone else around is like why is she taking this so seriously and I'm like no you don't get it it's like a bigger thing (laughs) it is it is and you don't it's one of those things you don't know until you experience it but if you can have a coach to encourage you and a group to support you and to try Mm -hmm. it it's you know, baby steps is fine, but those small things oh, that continue to absolutely. show you that this works are are part of it, and that's so great. I love how you're helping people do that. It's all about the little tiny things you do every day that builds who you are. It builds your health. It builds your future. And habits are hard to change. I mean, that's why mm-hmm. there's all these habit challenges, like all the way. Like you type in habit challenges on the internet, seven billion will show up, um, but you're probably not going to finish them. So. <laughs> Right. That's where I know I never have. So that's where the coach comes in to really help you figure out, okay, what new habit do you want to build? All right, we're not going to actually build it, but you're going to have to just commit your time. We're going to get you there. But like, you have to have enough of a pain point of time committed and wallet committed to actually really make that change. So it's nice. It, it helps you figure out, do I really want to change that? Or am I just kind of like, no, I'm good where I am. So it, it helps you figure out where you are in your life as well when you're like, okay, what do I want to change and how badly do I want to change it? You know, and then you have coaches and courses available to you that can do that for you. And that's really fantastic. I think it's awesome that everybody now has these resources 
And I don't necessarily know if most of what's around today was even around many years ago. I know I had no awareness of it even five years ago. So I think it's really fantastic that we've got this new up and coming like coaches, like foraging forward, really trying to make a difference. I think fantastic. It's true. Yeah. And to be able to help people from wherever they are, uh, wherever in the world, but also from wherever they are with their goals in that too. I, I love it. That's mm-hmm. so good. Uh-huh. I'm curious, what does it mean to you mm-hmm. to be a woman living her dreams? I actually wake up every day wanting to work, which is huge for me because I used to wake up hating my life and I did not want to like go to work. I was just miserable um, because it just didn't feel like I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. It just didn't feel right. And for all of the moments of being your own business owner, that's like truly terrifying because there's moments where it is. This is a blood, sweat and tears type situation. Um, It is just so worth it. And it's like when I talk to a client and they say, oh my gosh, when we break through something, and um, I had a client say we were working on a lot of things. We worked together for three months, and we worked on self-care, diet, and exercise, and she just knocked all the goals out of the park, and she's doing so fantastic, and I'm so proud of her. And she says, we're in the sixth week, and she goes, you know, I used to hate exercise, and it used to be this like horrible, like, oh my gosh, I have to do it. But she's like, now... I'm actually sad if I can't exercise that day. And it's like I'm just, it's like brushing my teeth. Exercise is now like brushing my teeth. It's just something that I do. And it was amazing. And she is like, just like on her way to getting what she wants and, and just like building that life for herself. And it was just so unbelievably, um, just like warmed my heart and just gratifying to know that I opened up these possibilities for her. And because she committed her time in working with me, we were able to get her what she wanted. You know, she put in the work, she put in the time, and she really built the lifestyle that she wants, and she overcame those obstacles, and she knows the sabotages, and she can be like, hey, sit down, sabotage, I recognize you, and I'm not going to let you stop me, and it's just fantastic, and, you know, because these were things she'd been dealing with for since she was 11 years old, and, and she'd been dealing with it for, you know, over 20 years, and it was just it, it, it just, I can't like describe how fantastic it feels to actually help somebody with what they're going through instead of just giving them advice and then like having it land and then just like slide off and not do anything. Um, and that's where I feel the difference in coaching is we don't just give advice. We're actually taking you through techniques and exercises to really get you through the meat of what's going on. And then based on that, get you action to, to move forward. Um, and I just love it. And it makes me so happy. And I get to work from home. And like right now, it's kind of cold outside. And I'm happy. I'm in bed. I've got my slippers. I've got my keys. Like, it's amazing. And yeah. I don't have to commute anymore. If you live in Los Angeles, you understand my pain. Um, it used to take me two hours to get to work. And I just love it. And, and I love that I get to help people. It's so it's just really fulfilling. I know that was a super long answer. I'm just, I can gush about it all day. No, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. I love it. It really sounds to me like what I was thinking about mm-hmm. when you were sharing is that you living your dreams is really about inspiring other women to be able to live theirs like you are, which I can mm-hmm. resonate with completely. That That is really yeah. the essence of how I feel about it, um, too, is that 100%. You know, you're, you're so fulfilled by that. And I think a lot of us can relate to that, that when we're um, living our own dreams, it's actually through doing the things that we're most passionate about. And that's yeah. shining a light for other people to blaze their trail, too. Absolutely. Yeah. I had a, um, I had a coach say that it was um, – she had me do a visualization exercise and I was a lighthouse and she, mm-hmm. and I was shining lights. I think it's bad. And that was only like a month ago. So I think it's fascinating that you just said the key phrase um, shining light because that's just, I mean, that's the universe like doesn't mess around. It does that for a reason just to be like, ah, remember, um, I think that was, that's super cool. So for me, just hearing that phrase was like, oh yeah, that's right. That's why I do this. <laughs> that is perfect. It describes it exactly. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, Rachel, thank mm -hmm. you so much for this amazing interview. I thank am you. so grateful for the work you're doing in the world and for the wisdom that you've shared and for your time and sharing it. So thank you very, very much. And I hope Absolutely. everyone listening got as much as I did out of this episode. I appreciate you sharing so openly and honestly. Oh, thank you so much, Jenny. I had a blast. And thank you for listening to this episode and being on this adventure with me. If you really got a lot out of this episode, please subscribe. And if you feel moved, leave a five-star review on iTunes or your podcast app. I would love to know what you think and even topics you'd like to hear more about in the future, which will help me out so much on this adventure of inspiring women to live their dreams. And if you know of someone who would enjoy this podcast, I'd be so grateful if you took a moment and shared it with them now. Remember to keep going because when wild women wake, mountains will move. <laughs>